Hello again, it's Lily. Uh, this video is going to be all about my favourite books of 2016. I read 81 books, or 82 technically, ah. and some are ones that I haven't really seen talked about yet, or I've been very quiet on booktube, so I would really like to show you those books. The first two books that I'm going to talk about uh, I don't actually have physical copies of, I got them from the library. The first one is Station Eleven um, by Emily St John Mandel and it, I love this book so much. I didn't want it to end, I thought it was brilliant. It's uh, post-apocalyptic and it's all about how the death of one man right at the beginning of the story is connected to everybody around him and how his influence uh, carries on for generations. Um, even people who never knew him are in some way connected to him and it's brilliant done. The writing style is, it reminded me of uh, 20th century novels. It feels like a kind of nice old fashioned sort of style but I loved it and the world was so vivid. It had had me wandering around my flat, like being amazed at flushing toilets and light switches and things like that. I, I haven't read a post-apocalyptic novel quite like it and it really just blew me away so I definitely recommend that one. The next book was, um, it was one of the first books I read this year, uh, so I didn't actually remember it until I went back and looked through my Goodreads and I was like, oh, I loved that book. Uh, this was one of the first I read in 2016 and it's amazing, it's a children's book. It's called The One and Only Ivan by Catherine Applegate and it's about a gorilla called um, Ivan who is very content with his life in, uh, it's like a little zoo in America and he's got uh, some friends, he's got a stray dog called Bob and um, an elephant, I've forgotten her name but one day a baby elephant comes and joins them and she misses the wild and it's this wonderful little story of uh, love and friendship and how humans are responsible for animals and we don't always make the right decisions and it's just beautiful, there's just so much in it, it's probably the, the most emotional story I think I've read in the least amount of words. The next book um, was Devastation Road by Jason Hewitt. Um, I actually recently read his first book, this was his second. And they're not linked but they are both set during uh, World War II or just afterwards. I really love books about memory so this is about a soldier who wakes up in a field and he has no idea where he is or who he is and he meets a young boy called uh, Yannick. They have a massive language barrier. Uh, Yannick doesn't really speak English, um, he knows a few words and that's about it and the main character in this, um, uh, what's his name, uh, Owen, uh, doesn't um, understand Czech at all. So they have some really interesting conversations uh, that were great fun to Google Translate because neither of them understand what the other's talking about but somehow uh, they communicate, um, but it's a really good book, it's really well researched um, and it's about the, the refugee crisis right after World War II, so um, very topically focused for what was happening last year and what is still happening now around Europe, so yeah, really good book. And the next book was one of my favourites of the entire year, I think, if I had to pick one book from the whole year it would be this book uh, as my favourite and uh, probably no surprises, but it's A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. Um, I remember when this came out and I thought, that's not my thing at all, and I was totally wrong. I read five of Patrick Ness's books this year and all of them were books that I had judged as a teenager as not being my thing at all when they were all totally my thing. But yes, this book is beautiful. Um, I probably don't need to say much about it because uh, the film's just come out, lots of people are reading it, it's very very popular, there are reviews all over YouTube. Uh, the next book is Poetry Book, um, it's The Sky Night Sky with Exit Wounds by um, Ocean Byung and this was a book that um, I'd seen a lot of chatter about on my Facebook, um, I follow quite a few um, literary magazines and I'm friends with some poetry people who were talking about this book a lot and so I thought I'd read it. All of the poems in here are brilliant, 
and I really really loved it. Uh, the next book is um, Ink and Bone by Rachel Kane. I don't actually have a copy of that book. It seems to be really hard to find. Um, nowhere has it. Um, but I do have the second book which is Paper and Fire. Uh, I've read both of them now. The first book I thought was brilliant. It had flaws and there were things that I was like eh, it could have been better but it was just so fun. I loved everything and I wanted to be reading it all the time when I was at work I couldn't stop thinking about it I love the whole concept of the world and the main concept is that the Library of Alexandria never burnt down so it's a whole alternate history uh, the main character he's a book smuggler and so he goes off to Alexandria and it's all this great fun and adventure and it was brilliant and really really interesting and I, I really wanted to know more about the world this book I didn't really feel went deeper into that world. It felt like I'd seen it all before and it was predictable. I think book three is out in June, I'm not sure when, um, but summertime sometime and the cover looks amazing so. Uh, uh, the next book is uh, Jacob's Colours by Lindsay Horden. I love this book. It is really heavy, uh, hard hitting emotionally. Um, it's about uh, Jacob, a uh, young gypsy boy, and it's also at the same time you get to his parents' story uh, before he was born and what they've been through and it all kind of comes together at a point um, that ja uh, Jacob's running from. And it's beautifully written. It deals very much with mental illness and the horrors of World War Two. I haven't seen many people talking about it, but people really need to be reading this. It's a very important book, I think. The next book is um, called The Bone Sparrow by Zana Freilon. And this was a book that got sent to me by the publishers because uh, I was actually rejected from reading this book on NetGalley and I was really upset about it and took it to Facebook where a friend who works at the publishers said oh I'll send it to you and I was like ah thank you and that was amazing and I'm very very happy about it it was a beautiful book it's about a little boy uh, Suvi who is a refugee in a detention centre in Australia um, with his family and his friends and that's the only life he's ever known he was born there um, he's about nine years old I think eight nine and things are changing within this detention centre but not in a good way and he is a very imaginative child, uh, some of the scenes are really really sweet and he's just, uh, I love him so much. And then at the same time you have um, another child, I've forgotten her name, uh, Jimmy, who she lives in the local village and she's having her own struggles with her family and having lost her mother. A lot of people compare this book to The Boy in the Striped Pajamas and while Technically you can say yes because it's about two children who meet on opposite sides of a fence. This book is so very very different from uh, The Boy in the Striped Pyjamas. The Boy in the Striped Pyjamas is set in history. We all know what's going on right from the start. Um, it's incredibly sad and it's, there's a futility there that we can't make any changes. We can't affect that story or those people's stories because it's, it's in the past, it happened, it's done. But this book is set now. This is a very important book because we can help the people who are like Suvi and his family in detention centres around the world, in refugee camps around the world. We can be helping and a lot of that help can come from just people knowing that this is happening and finding ways to help um, and make sure our governments are not doing what is happening in this book. The next book is Poetry, um, Racing Hummingbirds by uh, Jean Ann Verley. Oh, I loved every poem in this book, it's amazing, it's um, very kind of fierce and um, outgoing sort of book, very upfront about a lot of issues that women face, um, especially in America, to do with sex and relationships and um, love and broken down mental illness. It's brilliant. Um, read it. Yeah. Uh, the next book is The Coward's Tale by Vanessa Gebby. Uh, this one really surprised me because I started out reading it thinking, 
oh, this is a really strange book. Um, parts of it are written in the um, future tense. It feels like a collection of short stories based around this one little village um, in Wales, where um, a long time in the past uh, there had been a miners uh, accident where a lot of the men from that village um, they all died and it's about how that one incident affects the generations um, and it's it's brilliant it blew me away by the end I was bawling like a child oh. but it does make this book very interesting um, narratively and I'm a writer so um, as something I've not seen before um, and it's a really, really beautiful ending, and I love this book, so there you go. My next favourite was a graphic novel, um, but it's also a webcomic. The whole thing is available online, and I will link that down below. Uh, it's Stand Still, Stay Silent, book one, by Minna Sundberg. And I actually read this um, about a year ago, I think online and she posts pages every single day. She's an amazing artist. Some of these pages are just breathtakingly beautiful um, and the writing is really great. Uh, it's about a band of adventurers exploring um, the unknown world um, after an apocalyptic incident 90 years before. Um, so they go out and they're looking for books and information about the past and it's really really interesting and some of the characters um, are involved with magic and folklore. I've never seen anything like it and it's so so beautiful. Um, so yeah, I firmly recommend it. You can read the whole thing for free. You don't have to read buy the book, but I definitely recommend the book. It's so nice having a copy. Oh. And the next book is Song of the Sea art book, which is for the film Song of the Sea, which if you haven't seen this, it's really, really great. Um, it's a really cute little animation um, about family who have lost their mother and a journey to... Um, save the Spirits of Ireland by uh, the Cartoon Saloon, um, which is a, I think it's an independent company in Ireland that makes really, really beautiful films. They also make, made uh, Secret of Kells. They all deal with uh, Irish mythology, um, history in some degree, and they're just utterly beautiful. They use um, watercolour backgrounds and um, old traditional uh, animation and I just love it. And the music is beautiful. This book is um, it's quite like a lot of other art books for different films. Um, it shows you about characters, um, storyboarding, how things are made, um, and some of the detail is incredible. It was really interesting to read about the inspiration for the stories, um, where they, uh, how they changed characters to um, make them fit more in with the film's style, um, finding uh, different animators, and the director, um, is Tom Moore? Tom Moore. He wanted it to be a very specific kind of film, um, kind of story, and he was very much inspired by his son as a child who grew up while it took them to, uh, in the time it took them to make the film, but it, it's really astoundingly beautiful. If you have read any of these books, I'd love to hear from you. And um, those are my favourite books. Bye! Uh, <laughs> stand still, say... Uh, stand still... St uh, the <laughs> three uh, poems... Uh, uh, <laughs> Copter... I need a drink. This is silly. Yes. This whole... <laughs> yes. Uh, <it> was <laughs> Anyway, bleh. that was really rambling.